Hey, I'm back in Scarlet Hollow. We're gonna go see what's going on in the woods. Gotta love this brisk fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on record, since last year at least. You know how it is these days. Each summer is the hottest yet, until the next summer, which always finds a way to be so much worse. It's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves change, like normalcy is restored, if only for a moment. Sorry if that was a bit of a bummer. We should talk about something more fun, like, uh, skunk apes. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, seems like relevant. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen out here? Other than anything cryptid related, of course. Oh gosh, that's a good one. Let me think. Well, there's always the deer I saw stealing baby birds out of a nest and eating them. That was pretty messed up. Nah, yeah. <laughs> But I think most people know about that these days. I've seen tons of videos of other deer doing it, so I'm not sure if it counts as weird anymore. Oh, Tetanus Lake. That's definitely the weirdest. It's a five foot deep lake, 30 foot wide pile of old cans and bottles and assorted garbage with grass and trees growing on it. So you could barely tell what it was there until you stepped on it. It was practically solid ground with how much had been compressed. So you could still fall through if you weren't careful. Hence the name. Better be up on your shots if you want to mess around in there. It's all stuff from the 50s too, which is super neat. I salvaged a few bottles that I kept on my dresser as a little souvenir. I mean, I'm guessing not. Since she's like still doing them, but... Has anything bad ever happened on one of these hikes? You know, just curious. Hmm, let me think. There was that time back in early high school when Reese fell down a cliff. But he was fine. We had some folks from uptown rig up a pulley to get him out of the ravine, and his leg only took a couple months to heal. All in all, not too bad. Though I guess there was also the time I was out here alone and kinda got stuck in a cave. I was getting great footage of what I thought was a family of wampus bats, wampus cats, but I wasn't able to wiggle my way back out. Turns out that wampus cats were actually skunks who very much did not appreciate me blocking the entrance to their hidey hole. Then he has an obsession with skunks. Maybe that's just S on her shirt. Or, you know, Scarlet, I guess. <laughs> and instead of running for help, Gretchen just sat outside, bored to tears. Lassie, she is not. It took about an hour to get loose, which was pretty intense. Put a few tomato juice baths later and I was right as rain, so it could have been a lot worse. Oh, and there was a time I accidentally stumbled onto old Duke's property and nearly got my head shot off. But that happens to everybody sooner or later. I'd barely count it. So yeah, these hikes aren't all that dangerous, or aren't all that dangerous, all things considered. I ain't scared. Let's go. Let's move on. Did you hear that? Oh, it's old Duke. <laughs> oh, calm down, Gretchen, you old mutt. Same to you, Stella. You're always jumping at nothing, girl. Ew. Sorry for getting spooked, Duke. Thought you were. Oh, uh, that's like, uh, the college, right? Duke. But is that his name, too? <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> Some creature of darkness. Nah, girly, just old Duke. Now what the hell are you looking for out way out here? Skunk ape. Sorry, I asked. And who's this you suckered into coming with ya? Look at Gretchen. <laughs> Wait a tick, you aren't. Is that? Yep. I see. Welcome to the holler. My condolences. I'll keep you in my prayers. Now, both of y'all head on back to town to here. It's best you still well clear of this area tonight. I'm out dealing with my own critter and won't be too appreciative if a couple fools with a camera scare away the more sensitive wildlife. What are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy? Something musky? You see anything like that recently? Wouldn't you like to know? You never could stay in your business, Stella Richmond. Put that damn camera down. Oh, come on, Duke. Maybe I could help out. I'm pretty good at tracking. You know, I learned from the best. That you did. But I have yet to see a shred of proof that you listened to any of it. The way you tromp around the woods at night yelling about chunk, <laughs> chunk of bungas or what have you. Something's been getting at my chickens. I've lost three this week and can't afford to lose many more than that. I'm so sorry to hear that. But, uh, I wonder if Skunk Ape has a taste for chicken. Now see, this is why I don't come to you about these things. It ain't no skunk ape, whatever the hell that is. I know exactly what this is, but I know you won't believe me if I tell you. She believes in anything, what do you mean? Oh, Duke, you don't think it's... 
I do, actually. It's those damn mountain lions. They're out there, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up. You haven't been out in these woods as long as I have. Those sons of bitches are sneaky. Of course you wouldn't find any in one night of tracking. And I know for a fact that's what's been getting out my chickens. Couldn't be anything else. I'm telling you, man. Mountain lions are extinct in these parts. There hasn't been an actual sighting since 1990s. Even even those were iffy. I can't believe you go out there on your own. YouTube saying some river monster spotted by a couple school-aged boy scouts has been 100% confirmed. Yeah, Appalachian cougars are some kind of far-fetched fantasy made up by geezers like me. I agree, Duke. You made me look like a fool. I read those comments people were posting on your video. They were calling me all kinds of names just for seeing things with my own eyes that I know to be true. I'm sorry, Duke. I didn't mean to sick anybody on you. I don't think it's plausible. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Please kind of pissing me off now. You'll eat those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of those woods at dawn. And if you two don't want a face full of buckshot, I suggest you run home and stay out of the woods tonight. As Duke's words leave his mouth, the sinking feeling starts to pull at your stomach, and you glimpse brief flashes of something terrible to come. Whatever it is, the four of you are bound to meet it, and it will change you forever. What about Gretchen? Has she, she counted? I don't think this night ends well. How, how do you know? I go hunting in these woods all the time. Night, day, possums, bears, it don't make a difference. Even a mountain lion wouldn't stand a chance against the ingenuity of man here. Unless it's not a mountain lion. Oh, don't you get started again. Your daddy could hear you now going on about ghouls and goblins, using what he taught you to run around these woods like some kind of paranormal investigator. You want that to be his legacy, girl? And besides, you know my boy Bo and me are headed down to the state fair to show off Big Betty this week. We'll be gone days, and the chicken coop might well have a big all-you-can-eat sign on front of it if I don't nip this in the bud tonight. You know how I feel about my chickens. I couldn't take it if I lost any more of my poor little ladies. And you know I have to... Oh, <laughs> and you know I have to put out a video by tomorrow evening. Why? You don't have to. As Duke and Stella dig their feet in, the feeling from before gains form and clarity. Somebody here is going to die tonight. If I miss an update, I might lose my new sponsor. And who knows what that'll mean for my career. <laughs> Let's just lay it on the line. Put the balls on the table. <laughs> One of us is going to die tonight. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Are you trying to threaten me? <laughs> I, I want Duke to live, so... I'm not going to intimidate him like that. I don't know. It's just a weird feeling. A weird, bad feeling. Whoa. Are you psychic or something? <laughs> Ask again later. <laughs> oh, right, right. When we're in a more private place. I get you. Oh, hush, both of you. You're just trying to unsettle me. So I'll let y'all go off in the woods to film your little video. Uh, Jay, I think you freaked Duke out enough for one evening. Maybe we should leave the poor man to his wild goose chase. I am not freaked out by your friend's theatrics but if it gets you out of my hair sure i'm greatly disturbed now run along home and stay out of trouble come on i can't let him die you and stella return to the trail she carefully looks back the way you came okay the coast is clear there's no way we're letting duke edge us out that easy come on i know a trail that'll get us around him I gotta save Duke. Come on. This was... Yes, I knew you wouldn't give up on the hunt. Never. And trust me, we don't have anything to worry about from old Duke or a shotgun. I've gone out hunting with him before. The man sounds like a truck crashing through the trees when he walks. Even if we do cross paths, we'll hear him long before he catches wind of us. The trail's just up this way. Let's go. I'm making the assumption in all this that uh, I can't die, which might not be true, but I'm going to pretend that I have plot armor for all my decisions. All right, this looks like a good shot. Mind holding the camera? She hands you the camera and takes position. Ahem. As night falls, my new assistant, the mysterious Jay, and I find ourselves out on a high hill in the Blue Ridge Mountains, where we'll begin our hunt for the elusive yet pungent skunk ape. 
Though mostly encountered in Florida, a possible relative of Bigfoot has been spotted all along the southeastern edge of the United States, including right in this very county. Here's hoping we get a glimpse tonight. We'll check back once we're on the trail. Until then, stay searching, Stellars. I can take that camera off your hands for now. We'll be able to start tracking scenes once the sun sets all the way. In the meantime, we get to take in all of this gorgeous scenery. Duke may be gone, but that feeling in your gut still lingers. Something terrible awaits you, something unavoidable. Though what exactly is wrong in these woods still eludes you. What's wrong is that it's quieter than it should be. The air's a little too still. The creatures of the night a little too absent. These hills are stale. <laughs> we ain't getting romantic in here. There's something wrong in the air. It feels oppressive. Dark. Hmm, you don't happen to mean stinky, do you? <laughs> Think you're smelling the skunk ape? Yeah, that's a skunk ape. The storm is coming. <laughs> no, it's too quiet. This whole hillside feels dead. Now that you mention it, it is a little quieter than it usually is out in these parts. Maybe this skunk ape scared off some of the local wildlife. That was an interesting sound. I wouldn't call it a snort, but... Your quiet moment with Stella is broken by a loud percussive snort. <laughs> Death has come for me at last. Goodbye, cruel world. I'll give me the apricots. Grab a handful of dried apricots in the whole bag. I actually dried these myself. I wound up getting a bunch of the apricots for free from Janie a while back. I didn't know what else to do with them. It's wild how easy it is to make your own dried fruit. <laughs> that sounds fake. <laughs> I don't want to sound too interested, okay? That's neat. Thanks, Stella. <laughs> Anytime. But as long as you're in town, don't worry about food. I've got you covered. You and Stella sit down on a overlook, snacks in hand, as the quiet sounds of eating wildlife wash over you. Gretchen nails a stick, distracted for the time being. So, tell me what it's like in Harlan. <laughs> I forgot I named that my town. <laughs> so, tell me what it's like in Harland. Do you have a house? An apartment? Do you live with family? Roommates? Pets? Tell me what it's like to be Jay. <laughs> I live in a doorless basement. I live in a doorless basement that floods whenever it rains. I also have five roommates. They have to come downstairs to do laundry in my room because the washer and dryer are down there. I like it. <laughs> Finding a place with the in-unit laundry is a big deal in Harlan, and my roommates might be loud, but the place is dirt cheap, and I'm never alone. That's a nice way to look at things, but I don't know if I personally could handle that. Ha <laughs> ha! That dog eating that stick. So what do you do for a living? I'm a teacher. I'm in one of those have your debt forgiven in 10 years programs right now, so I won't be in the best financial position for the next decade. Gosh, that's a long time. The kids I teach now will be graduating high school. A teacher, that's such a valuable thing to be doing with your life. I hate it. <laughs> I thought it'd be fulfilling when I started out, but wow, have my kids been driving me insane. I swear to God, if I have to hear one more tantrum or deal with any more Roblox drama, I'll storm out of my classroom and never turn back. For a moment, you think you catch something in the tree line from out of the corner of your eye, but before you can see anything, it's gone. I think I saw something out there. It might be Skunk Ape. Do your best to pretend it isn't watching us. We don't want to scare it off. Well, let's go after it. You going to begin the hunt, are we? That works for me. Try not to make any sudden moves as we pack up. <laughs> Before either of you can start packing, you're interrupted by a blood-curdling yelp.
Whoa. That sound wasn't meant for human ears. Whatever lurks behind the tree line is something best left unseen. But the events of this evening were already set in motion long before you stepped foot in Squirrel Hollow. There's no turning back now. Stella immediately packs her bags and slings it over her shoulder. There's something terrible out there, Stella. Whatever it is, it's close. I don't look so happy. The dog looks appropriate. Here, hold Gretchen's leash for me and let's check this out. You and Stella inch towards the tree line as she shines her flashlight into the woods. As you approach, a series of weak clucks call out from a nearby bush. Maybe Duke's birds weren't eaten after all. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the? What the hell was that? Hold on. I gotta play that back. Holy shit. I'm guessing it must be maybe two, three feet tall. Doesn't look hairy either, so I think we can rule out Skunk Ape. But whatever it is, it has one of Duke's chickens. It looks like it's headed north. Let's go after it. I'm just going to silently follow her. You follow Stella as she splints into the unknown, Gretchen excitingly pulling you along by her leash. Oh shit! Oof! <laughs> oh good, the monsters will get you first! Say that, but you still stopped to see if it was okay. There was a monster out here who'd both get eaten. That's just part of the job. Oh no, that poor thing. It must have been one of Duke's. Oh Jesus, it's still alive. I'll let you investigate it. You say nothing as Stella starts a closer examination of the bird. Ahem, it seems we found one of Duke's chickens, folks, and she's not looking good. I'm hesitant to speculate, but it definitely seems to have gotten some sort of growth under her skin. Could be a tumor. Could be something else. Either way, I don't think there's much that can be done for her at this point. Jeez, I'm gonna have to put up with some massive content warnings for this buddy. Hey! Hey, do you hear that? What in Sam Hill are you two doing out here? Didn't I tell you to... B birdie? Oh, Birdie, what's wrong, darling? Good God. <laughs> did y'all see what they did this to her? <laughs> yeah, I think I can hear him. <laughs> Didn't see whatever did this to your bird, but I think we can hear them right now. Oh, don't tell me you're all cut up in Stella's nonsense. Duke, I'm so sorry. We were on this trail when you found her. Like this. I'm guessing nobody else can hear. Put that camera away for good sake, girl. God's sake, girl. I don't want to be in another one of your videos. No one needs to see me like this. No one needs to see Birdie like this. You wouldn't put her online, would you? Not when she's like this, all swollen and hurting. Duke, did you hear what Jay said? I think they're coming closer. Come on out, you sons of bitches! Duke, don't shoot them. We have no idea what will happen. You hear that, Stella? That ain't the sound of something peace like. Whatever these things are, they'll pay for what they did to my girls. Come on, whatever your name is, grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. As the creature in the tree line grew louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. Quick, they're closing in on us. Can I just like sacrifice her and take the dog and Duke? All right, sorry, dog. Bye, Gretchen. You dive for the flashlight and swing your body towards the woods. I said aim the damn thing, quick. Perfect. Oh my God. <laughs> just grazed it. But that should make it pretty easy to track, eh, hey, Stella? Yeah, a blood trail is pretty hard to miss. Guess we know it wasn't a mountain lion after all. Though it didn't look like any cryptid I've ever heard of. This is going to be one hell of a video. Oh, let's get it over with. Where's the dog? As your heartbeat settles, you realize that Gretchen stopped tugging at her leash. You look down only to find an empty harness and the paw prints of a runaway dog. Wait, where's Gretchen? Where's my dog? Fuck it, I ain't saying nothing. Gretchen, I'm coming for you. I'll be damned if I let her chase after those things alone. Alone, you have no choice but to follow Duke and Stella into the darkness. 
Guess I'll die. Think to yourself, a coward to your core. Come on, what the hell? I was just, I was just joshing. As the dark of the night surrounds you, the sound of snapping branches cut into your ear. If you're going to die, I might as well be on your feet, surrounded by other people, rather than in woods alone, by a monster or slow starvation. You steal your nerves and run after Duke and Stella. As you push deeper into the woods, the unearthly sounds once again surround you. Yeah, just keep on chugging along. Ah, yeah, some more tree fetuses. Are you trying to get us lost? Slow down! I think we're almost there. Oh, the trees are starting to thin out. That guy looks like a sloth. Lord, that smell! Oh. Nicely lined up. The shrieks pull out back into steady whispers as you, Stella, and Duke stumble upon the putrid bodies of dozens of dead and dying animals. At the edge of it all, an immobilized Gretchen gurgles in pain as one of the creatures looms over her. A sinking realization pulls at your gut. This is their nest, and you are surrounded. Gretchen! Blasted, Duke! As Stella steps forward through the nest, Duke pulls her back. Yeah, we can save her. Give me that shotgun. This isn't over. We can still save her. Dude, can't you just, like, shoot that thing? Are you out of your mind? There's got to be dozens of the things in the trees. They're circling us to protect their brood or whatever it is they've been planting in our animals. We got to get out of here while we still can. Duke's right. There's nothing we can do now. But, Jesus Christ, I can't leave Gretchen like this. Duke, give me your gun. You're not thinking about. She's my dog, Duke. We can't save her, but I'll be damned if we leave her behind to suffer like the rest of these animals. It's my fault. I'll do it. I know she's your dog, Stella, but you don't have to do this by yourself. I can take the shot. Alright. Alright. Thank you. Aim true. Grab Duke's gun and take careful aim. Can I shoot the animal instead for this thing? I just blew it out of existence, I guess. Run! Oh, they're pissed. As soon as the gun fires, you, Stella, and Duke spread back through the woods. The unearthly hollers and whispers of the nest nipping at your heels. In the highest branch of trees and down on the forest floor, they're all around you, casually keeping pace with all your all-out sprint. Quick, my truck's down this way. You make it to the road, but three of the creatures stand between you and Duke's truck. I have the gun! I think this might be the safer option, though. And also, your chicken's fucked, so... you stolen from them, Duke. You have to give them back what's theirs. Jay's right, Duke. Birdie. She's part of their brood now. Is this what you want? Is this what you want, you sons of bitches? Fine, take her. Take her and leave us be. Duke. Get in the truck. Then get in the truck and let's get the hell out of here. Duke, do we have to take the truck back? I can just walk. Those creatures left. I'll be fine. Stella, now's not the time. Alright, I can do this. Squeeze into Duke's tiny two-seater truck, tucking her legs on either side of the gear shift. Stella is quiet and stiff next to you, her shoulder rigid as she squeezes into the tiny cab. I have nothing to say. You let the silence continue, staring out at the road ahead. Every now and then you spot what looks like a pale, anguished face, peeking out from between the trees before vanishing back into the underbrush. Soon, the rumble of gravel beneath the tires gives way to uneven pavement, and the truck comes to a stop in front of a small cottage. Thanks for taking me home, Duke. Anytime. But Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, what were those things? I have no idea. I've never heard of anything like them, but I got a ton of footage. Nothing really clear, but it's a start. Hmm. I better go check in with Bo. He'll be worrying about me. You and your friends stay safe. Looks like those things didn't follow us, but... Well, no point in talking about the butts. Just look out for yourselves. Take care, Duke. Mm-hmm. And here you are, back in town, away from the woods, with no one but Stella in sight. 
Her phone buzzes in her pocket. Now that you're back in town, you must finally have reception again. Six missed calls from Tabitha. Where the hell did you go? <laughs> and 13 text messages. <laughs> That's nothing important. You slide your phone back in your pocket. You can deal with Tabitha later. God, what a mess this night's been. Hope you don't mind me asking, but why on earth did you ask Duke if he could walk back? I just don't like cars is all. The rolling death machines if you ask me. Oh, so what, like your, your dad died in a car crash, huh? Sorry if I weirded you out. And this feels like a... Probably just wouldn't even want to talk about it, but whatever. I'm so sorry about Gretchen. There's nothing we could have done. I just have to accept what happened and move on. She was 17, after all. It's not like we had many years left. Why did it have to happen like that? That's not to dwell on it. <laughs> You're right. What happened, happened. It's done. Neither of us needs to go back and relive that moment. What do you make of everything we saw? I don't know. I haven't seen or read about anything like this. Although, maybe... We gotta find out more about those things. The library doesn't open for a while, so any real research will have to wait until the morning. That being said, there is someone in town who might have some useful information. My friend's mom. Our place isn't far. We should head over there now before it gets any later. Yeah, let's do it. Cool, let's go. I hope she's still awake. Bell knocks on the door. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot a shadowy figure staring at you from the, across the road. You didn't hear it approach. I'm gonna not say anything about it, because maybe it'll make him stay. Probably not, but... Keep it to yourself. You and Stella are both on edge after what happened in the woods. There's no need to stress her out over nothing. Yay. Jesus. Welcome home. You're finally back where you belong. Before you can respond, the door behind you swing open. An older woman stands in the entryway. Go home, Wayne. I can't help you tonight. You look back and the figure is already gone. Disappeared into the shadow of the night. I'm sorry about that, Stella. Some people just can't be helped. What brings you out here so late? And who is this? Hi, Mrs. Forsyth. This is Jay. Is it okay if we come in? You and Mrs. Forsyth briefly lock eyes. She's impenetrable, and you feel small and almost naked in her presence. There is something about her that's far beyond you, but you feel no threat, no malice. And then the moment passes, and you see only the middle-aged woman before you. Of course, of course. You're in luck. I just put on water for the hibiscus tea. And for goodness sakes, you can call me Sybil. You're an adult now, after all. Welcome to my little nook. It's nice to finally meet you, Jay. I was so sorry to hear about your mother. Tea is life. Oh, I wonder if this is that, uh... The, the waiter's mom. Vivian was such a lovely soul, and she's been sorely missed in the holler. And now poor Pearl Ann is gone as well. Do let me know if there's anything you need while you're in town. Who was that outside? Just a very sick man. You don't need to be worried about him. I wish I could, like, say that they said my name, but... How did you know my mom died? Oh, Pearl Ann was such a chatty woman. Not much went on that I wouldn't get an earful of. Bless her heart. I've never met Pearl Ann. You don't have to pass on your condolences to me. I have no feelings about the woman. Ha! That's fair, child. But it seemed like the right thing to do. Regardless, I am sorry about your mother. We were good friends for many years, you know. You should come by sometime. I can delight you with unsavory tales of her youth. We need your help. Ah, yes, I suppose pleasantries can wait for another time. What's got you here so late? You seem troubled. You know about weird stuff, right? Unexplainable stuff. I'm not so sure I follow, dear. I know which oils to use for which aches. I know about 
classical spiritualism. Just what sort of unexplainable things are you talking about? We ran into some creatures out in the woods. These things. I don't even know how to describe them. Hmm, can't say I know much about local wildlife. My daughter has always a br had a brighter gift for nature than I. This wasn't... This wasn't the local wildlife, Miss Forsyth. Here, I can show you. Stella pulls out her camera and tilts the screen towards Sybil. Ah, one of your little videos. Mm -hmm. Where was this? Up the mountains, to the northwest. Within the town limits? Yes. I see. Is there a way to make the video bigger and louder if you can? I need to plug the memory card into a computer. I could go back and get mine. No need. Kanika should still be awake. She can lend us hers. You better come with Stella. I'm sure she'll be more willing to help with a friend than her nosy mother. I guess that was the tea. <laughs> Kanika's door is covered with stickers. With their edges frayed from recent but failed attempts to remove them. This is a childhood room someone wasn't happy to return to. The stickers both sides look pretty good. I'll take both. Kanika, come on out. We could use a little help. What, Mom? Sailor Moon shirt. Oh, hey. It's Stella. Or, hey, Stella. <laughs> and a stranger. What are you doing in my house? Uh, you'll know who I am, I guess. Hi, I'm Jay. Tabitha's cousin? Yep. Sweetie, we were wondering if you could borrow your laptop. Stella and her friends have a video to show us. It's really important, Kanika. Mm, okay. My room's a mess. I'll just bring it out there. Heads up, Kanika. This is graphic. There's a lot of dead and sick animals on the recording. You know I have a harder stomach than any of our friends. I'm pressing play. Silence washes over the room as the video plays. Stella, what the hell is this? Did you film it? Was that Gretchen at the end there? Stella, where's Gretchen? Uh, I'll break the bad news. She didn't make it. We shot her, Kanika. Those things. They put something in her, and I wasn't about to let her suffer. Stella, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'm fine. I just want to know what did this to her. Unfortunately, if these creatures are what they think they are, what happened to Gretchen is but the start of something far more sinister. My grandmother called them ditchlings, and they are a terrible omen, a sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Mom, come on, this is serious. Stop scaring Stella and Jay with this... Tele... Telepo crap? She just lost her dog. Have some respect. Kanika, sweetie, let your mother talk. The creatures themselves are harmless to people, despite that grisly scene in the woods. But just as birds flock before a storm, the ditchlings congregate where tragedy is soon to fall. To see one is to be cursed by fate. To see so many in one place is... Sybil holds her silence. Jesus, Mom, they've clearly had a rough night. They don't need this. It's okay, Kanika. This is helpful. Stella, whatever these things are, they aren't magic. We can't rule that out. Not after what we saw. But fine, let's focus on what we know. Whatever they are, they're doing something to these animals. You saw that nest. What were those growths? Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's like reproducing. Maybe they're making more of themselves. Yeah, maybe what we're seeing here is some sort of parasitic larval stage, part of their life cycle. But I don't want to jump to any conclusions about something this out there, not without doing some research or talking to a biologist. I'm sure there's a rational explanation that'll clear all this up. Hmm. Oh dear, I'd forgotten entirely about the tea I'd put on. Let me fix you up a couple cups. It'll help soothe your nerves. I don't know, it's getting late. I should let Jay get some rest. I ran him ragged today with all the hiking and running through the woods in terror. <laughs> tired of shit. Eh, I'm just gonna remain silent. My favorite thing to do. Thanks for everything, you two. Let me get you some of my homemade peppermint tea to go. It really does wonders to soothe the soul. Bye, Stella. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? And call me if you need to talk. Thanks, Kanika. I'll see ya. Bye, Jay. It's excellent. It's excellent ice from warmed. Though with the nights getting chillier, warm will probably be best. Helps wake up the bones. Be careful out there. 
both of you. Sybil turns and closes the door behind her. Alrighty, let's head back home. My home, I mean. And here we are. You're welcome to stay the night if you want. Yeah, you know, I don't want to look like I'm too one-sided here. I'll go, I'll go see Tabitha. I should probably head back and check on Tabitha. That's sweet of you. Are you sure you're okay heading back up the mountain alone? Yeah, I'm more scared of Tabitha than those things in the woods. <laughs> yeah, Tabby can get really intimidating. Well, I won't stop you if you really want to go back. Here's my number. Call me when you get there, okay? And good luck. You and Stella exchange numbers. I'll see you tomorrow. Sure. We can research this, I guess. Yeah, we are. And I guess I shot your dog. We have some kind of connection there. Stay safe, buddy. You begin the long hike back up to the Scarlet Estate alone. Almost home. Yeah, hey, where's that guy? You've made it. Oh, the light's on. How nice. Your salvation in sight. You make a mad dash to the door. Yeah, I'm just going in. Oh, God. I'm going back. As you reach for the knob, the door swings open. Where the hell have you been? Do you know anybody named Wayne? I employ over 100 people. I'm sure I know a Wayne. I got suckered into something. <laughs> Stella girl had me come with her on the night hike to find cryptids. Ah, so you met Stella then. Uh, that explains everything. And she's gotten you all worked up. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. C can you tuck me in? Are you serious? Tuck you in? No. Go to sleep. Man, jerk. The sound of the wind whistling through the house gives you an uneasy feeling in your gut. It's probably best to turn in and try to leave the night behind you. As you settle into your room, you remember that Stella asked you to call her once you got back. <laughs> Never let him know your next move. You're too tired for a phone call. Stella can wait until the morning. <laughs> From the relative safety of the uncomfortable bed, the events of the past evening seem like something that happened to someone else. Though you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments, for now you're safe and you're warm. Eventually, the sun will rise and chase away the monsters. Make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. Maybe tomorrow, if you're lucky, you'll wake up in the normal world and have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin. It's a nice thought, but deep down, you can't help but worry that things will only get worse. Well, we survived the day. Power of plot armor and a shotgun. Let's see what day two awaits us in the next episode.